Yeah. Well, uh, I, obviously it feels great. It feels great to, to step in. Um, my message to our team was just to continue to be focused and determined and passionate about some of the things that's happening. We have a great young group, a great core that uh, are looking forward to being great as a unit. Um, <clears throat> our leadership uh, from our veterans that have been around has really been paramount uh, since I stepped in. Um, and I just, I, it was a pleasure to step in and see everybody focused today and ready to go. How much does your mindset, I guess, shift knowing that you have more responsibility now and, and, the, and the women will look at you to, to lead them more? Well, creating relationships as an assistant was big and it was huge for me. Um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in those young ladies and they have a lot of confidence in me. So um, it's not really a big change. Obviously, uh, I've been a head coach at other um, situations and other organizations, but um, it, it, it's such a pleasure to come in an organization like this one uh, where you, it's so much support and so many people pulling for you and making sure that you are in a position that, um, you, you know, you'll be successful. So our young ladies are very, very focused and very determined to, you know, play hard for me. And that's what I, I really admire. What is the change? What are we going to see that's different? Well, um, obviously you'll see uh, up and down, fast-paced game. Um, I think one of the things that we've been struggling with is on the defensive side of the ball, it's been very difficult for us to stay consistent. So we've been talking a lot about making sure that we're in the proper place at the right time. Um, so I think you'll see a lot more of a determined, passionate, focused team defensively. And then obviously making shots um, just from a player development background. Uh, we're making sure that we're adding a lot of player development um, in our within our practice schemes. So we'll have a lot of a lot more efficiency when it comes to our players. You worked with Len before with the team and without. How did that kind of play in that relationship plan to you stepping into this role and how much will that help you guide the team going forward? Oh, Lynn is wonderful. I mean, we've been around each other for forever. Um, and it's just such a pleasure working by her side. Uh, I loved her then. I love her now because, you know, she's straightforward. She understands the game at a high level. She's been uh, so much of an ambassador for the women's game. So um, when it came time to make the decision on what would happen, you know, we were able to kind of see it, see the game from the same set of eyes. And uh, she was one of those that was you know, in my face saying, hey, hey, Carlos, if you're really ready to do this, then then let's make it happen. So I wanted to make sure that I was focused and determined and passionate about what was going on. And she was the same way. How recently did those conversations with her start to you potentially moving up into this role? Oh, no, it was blindsided for me. Uh, I had no idea things were happening. Um, so when it happened, you know, obviously with my trust level in her and her trust level in me, um, you know, it was a basic conversation that ended up happening on, on that day, to be honest. So it was pretty, it was pretty unique. You worked with Tamiga, Katie Douglas, tons of pro players before on their player development. Now that you're coaching a young team, how much will those skills and your past help you coach this t fever team? Oh, it's, um, it's going to be huge for us. Uh, it's one of those things where everyone that I talk to on our team in particular, they're so excited about the ability to get better in the WNBA. And when you've been around players uh, with that high level intensity, uh, high level of intensity, it makes it easier for you to deal with people like that. Obviously dealing with the Tamika Catchings, uh, Katie Douglas, uh, young ladies like that have, you know, had long outstanding WNBA careers. So, um, you know, you look at Melissa Smith, you look at Queen Egbo, uh, and Destiny Henderson, you know, those young ladies bring so much of a determined, passionate spirit to the game that it's nowhere but up for those ladies. How do you get the team to mentally adjust to such a sudden change? Oh, it's not, not really hard um, because obviously we didn't have the type of record that we wanted. Um, I don't think our team really reflects, reflects the record two and seven right now, um, but <clears throat> I will say that when you talk to them, they understand the magnitude of playing hard and understanding schemes offensively and defensively. So now it's easier for them to step in the role of, okay, it's time to turn it up. You know, in this particular area, 
Um, so it's been it's been easy for me to kind of talk to them from a conversation standpoint and let them understand exactly what we need to do to move forward. Especially when you have a season as condensed as this one, how key are these initial days for you um, to kind of transitioning quickly and, and building a strong foundation? I think it's very, very. Um, it's a condensed season. First, let me let me comment on that. So, um, it's it's getting a lot in and a little bit of time, and uh, I think that takes leadership, that takes focus, that takes young ladies that really understand the grind. Um, so once we are on the floor, I mean, we set the clock and it's time to get busy. It's time to get exactly what we need to get done. And I think we do a good job of bringing our, our focus to the table. We discussed this when you were hired back in December as an assistant coach when you were describing your style. But from a Fever fan perspective who maybe don't know you from a head coaching perspective, how would you describe your style? High energy. Um, up and down, we get up and down uh, the floor. Uh, my philosophy is I really like the offensive end of the floor. Um, obviously, we have great defensive coaches in Jared Simpson, um, and I was on the defensive side of the ball as an assistant. Um, but <clears throat> my thing is offense. I really like to get up and down, um, and I want to make sure that we are efficient as an offensive scoring team. You have the interim tag now. Um, yes. Do you view this season as a, as a way to prove that you want more or would you want to be the head coach fastest? You know, thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's always been a, a lifetime, long-term dream of mine. Um, just being here. When I first got here, you know, with Tamika Catchings and Lynn Dunn, Katie Douglas, um, this was always a big-time scenario for me. Um, I loved it. I loved being the player development coach here. I loved when I was hired as an assistant here. Um, just the Simon family, the Pacers sports entertainment, just the Pacer side. I had a chance to meet a lot of the NBA players on that side and get, you know, rela establish relationships with the NBA coaches. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a family down here for me. Um, so I would love nothing more than to be the head coach here and uh, I'm going to work my tail off to make sure that happens. To that end, you know, Tamika hires you, <laughs> Lynn promotes you. Are you looking to kind of bring some stability at the head coaching position to this team and this franchise? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> obviously, it, there's things that happen along the way, um, and you know, decisions have to be made. Um, they must be made in different scenarios, and that's completely understood. So we want to make sure that I'm here to work. I'm here to work. We making sure that our team understands what it takes to perform at a high level on the floor, off the floor, and um, you know really represent this franchise in a in a in a in an orderly manner to where they understand what we represent as the Indiana Fever. You have a chance to reach out to Marianne and, and you know just show I guess your respect for a Hall of Fame coach. I have not. I shot her a text, but I have not spoken with Marianne yet. And I really appreciate everything that Marianne brought to our organization. I really, um, you know, enjoyed my time working with Marianne, uh, very bright, very uh, respectful mind of the game. I had some, some very good moments with her and she really knows the game at a high level. So I wish her nothing but the best, her and her family. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you. Appreciate it. No Kelsey, what's your relationship like with Carlos? What did you? What was your reaction when you heard he was going to be your next head coach? Uh, considering we had an off day, I think we were all pretty shocked. Some of us get our nails done, hair done, everything. So when they said immediately get on the mandatory call, like it was just like uh, we hope nothing bad happened, obviously. Um, but the change, obviously, is bittersweet because we've all built relationships with Coach Marianne. Um, I wish her the best. Um, we've grown to have a really great relationship. Um, but you know, things happen. You know, management makes decisions. So um, I think for us, we kind of got to kind of focus on what Carlos brings to the, to the, the table. Um, me personally, um, he's helped me a lot in many different ways since been hired, you know, from the past. So um, I look forward to, you know, continuing to build our relationship, um, us using his leadership to get some wins um, and kind of stay focused and knowing that um, it's a build by build process and we're going to embrace it. Might only have been one day, but do you get any sense for kind of how you guys might play a little differently with the new uh, we definitely had a bounce in our stuff. It's a lot more energy, and he's going to hold us accountable. Uh, I think for us, it's like him holding us accountable and making us do stuff over when it's not the right way. Um, that kind of leadership is something that we need. 
um, to somebody to hold us accountable and make sure that even though I'm making you feel some type of way right now, I'm helping you, you know, in the end. So it's important. Um, and we think that energy that we built today, hopefully we can keep it going. He's worked with Catch and Katie Douglas on growing their skills and making them better, kind of lauded for that for yeah. development yeah. skill. How much do you think, especially this is a younger team, that can help you guys now? Uh, I think that I think that him being a player makes everything, I think, a little bit more better for us because he knows what it takes to kind of be at your best. Um, I would say for us is utilizing what he brings to the table, whether that be head coaching, um, personnel, and even you know individual work. Um, he knows it all, so I think we get the best of both worlds. <laughs> in the few months you've been around Carlos, what main differences do you see between him and Marianne? Um, uh, Coach Marianne is very, uh, very, very in tune to the details, but I think Coach Los is more in tune to energy. Um, energy is going to provide all that, all those details. So for us, I think what he wants us to do is make sure we bring that energy every single day, and it, it can't have any drop off. As, as one of the team's leaders, what are you trying uh, to accomplish maybe here in the next week or so to allow this transition to be as smooth as possible? Uh, definitely a little bit of uh, stability and balance. Um, a lot's happening, a lot's going on. Obviously, it's changing leadership, but that can't waver for us. Um, so it's important for me, um, D-Rob, Tori, Tiff, to make sure that we maintain that stability by making sure everything is still ran smoothly. Um, as far as being on time, you know, logistics, all that kind of stuff, I think we can control those controllables for sure. Kelsey, what do you think is the biggest challenge of just going right back into a game and, and, and like you said, providing some stability in a game setting right off the bat? Uh, it's going to be a little different. Like I said, I think that balance and making sure that we all stay doing everything that we need to do. Um, obviously, there's a change in leadership so fast. We have a game tomorrow, but um, that's a part of the business, part of, you know, part of where we are. Um, I think we could look forward to some different things and, you know, we're going to embrace it. Oh, definitely. Um, yesterday I didn't because you know you gotta give people time. You know, you know, respect her. You know, respect everything she has going on. But it's important for us to kind of like, you know, maintain our relationship. I build a personal relationship with her that I think it'll last forever. And um, I'll th I think that's one of those people I can always ask for anything. So. Kelsey, the couple of games that you've had where you've been held to single digits, you've responded with a 23-point night, a 25-point night. Do you feel like you're seeing growth in that regard in your own resiliency? Uh, I sure hope so. Um, I really want to limit those single-digit single, uh, those single digit nights. Um, things happen. I'm human. Um, but I think it's important to build those good habits to make sure you know we can eliminate as much as possible for sure. You said there was a mandatory team call. What was your kind of reaction right when you heard the news? And were you surprised at all, kind of by the timing being nine yeah. games into your season? Yeah, it, it, was, it was just... I think the timing of everything, we had a day off. Uh, we had just came from a road trip. We had just played, you know, the champions. You know, we had a really good game against them. We were really close, you know. We took it to the wire. So things were really different. And I think it was unexpected because how we just came and what we just came from, for sure. Questions for Henny? Yeah. No. <laughs> I know your career's only been going for about three weeks at the pro level so far, but what was kind of your reaction to having a head coaching change so young in your career? Um, I feel like it was just a turning point in which I just had to adjust, um, you know, new coaching style and just trying to, you know, learn as much as possible, um, you know, from what they want from me. And, you know, also just trying to bring um, things to the table that I've already, you know, established from coming out of college. What have your impressions kind of been of Carlos in his time as one of your assistant coaches and now your head coach? Um, he's been a, a very positive person, I would say. Um, he always comes in with a lot of energy. Um, I feel like he's he speaks the truth. Um, you know, he doesn't try to like anything other than that. And, um, you know, he, he has so much passion for the game. And you can tell by the way he coaches and the way, you know, he presents himself when he comes into the gym and, you know, just the talks that he has with us. He worked with Tamika Catchings and grew her skills, Katie Douglas, a bunch of NBA players. He's been kind of known for that player development side as a rookie. Does that kind of excite you that he's now the head coach of your team? Yeah, um, I'm extremely happy for him. I'm extremely happy for our team, you know, and what we have coming in the future. Um, you know, we're just ready to continue to play and just get better as a team and, you know, still learn from each other as we go. What are the main differences to you between Carlos and Marianne? Um, I feel like everybody has their different style of play, but I feel at the end of the day, they're, they were a team too, so as a collective unit, so we all just gel together as much as possible. But um, I just feel like coming in, you know, it's it's kind of new for him too, and it's just new for us too, so I, just, I feel like I'll just have to, you know, wait and see from a head coach standpoint, I guess. Were you surprised at all with the news? And, and maybe what were you doing when you got that call to get on the mandatory call? I was call on my way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I had to deposit some checks. But, um, yeah, it was just really random throughout the day. Um, you know, just a mandatory call, emergency. So, you know, we hopped on the call and then the news broke. This team has five rookies, which have obviously been through a ton of change. 
in itself over the last couple of months. What's the key to being resilient here as you go through another period of change? Just to stick together. You know, a lot of things happening within the season, but don't let that deter you from the ultimate goal. And, um, you know, our goal is to still move forward, you know, positive positively and you know let's let's win some games um you know let's still grow and learn from each other we know we have a lot still to build so we're just gonna you know focus on that you specifically have had a nice start to your rookie season but specifically the three-point shot is something that's really been falling for you what do you think has been a key there um just to you know stick with my shot um as well as me um, being a facilitator on the floor but also being a threat offensively and just to trust and believe in my shot and when i'm open just to shoot it